he said, mom, I've lost my job during COVID. What do I do? And I say, you do what you did last time when you didn't have a job. Because it worked both times the exact same way. My name is Margo McKinnon, and I am from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. The very first uh, spiritual encounter that I that really impacted my life was when I was four years old. And one evening, I was in the living room all by myself, and it was really dark. And I heard this voice come from out of the darkness, and it said you are to be a teacher like that and then i remember that as i as i think about my story i think about when that voice showed up for me on other occasions so i really with your listeners here um vivian to really think about if they've ever had that powerful voice or a powerful knowing and when does it show up in life? I had this voice show up for me when I was three years old, I realize. And when I was three, we had we lived right on the beach when we were little kids, and I was surfing. And I couldn't get back up. Like the waves kept knocking me down, and then the water underneath was pulling me this way. And I couldn't get my balance to get out. And I was starting to panic. And my and I heard that same voice, and it said, with the next wave, let it push you down, then push your feet into the sand, and then push towards shore, and let the wave carry you onto shore. And I did that. Then I saw my parents, they weren't very far away, they just didn't know I wasn't, I was struggling. You know, I had a little scrunched up face. Didn't you see I was drowning over there? But anyway, I thought, oh, that voice comes in in my life to protect me, to guide me, it befriends me. It's my greatest therapist. If I have a problem, I can just chat with that voice and it will give me a very deep knowing about what I'm supposed to do. So I always had that, but I also had as a child, I used to see spirits around. Uh, they, you know, when I went to my grandmother's house, the whole room was filled with spirits and and I had to teach myself as a child, is that like a spirit person? Is that a human person? And I had to teach myself as I grew older because I didn't have any mentor or any real guide to, you know, a teacher to teach me. So, for example, I remember one day sitting in my living room and I heard that voice again. It said, uh, die, breast cancer, 36. Oh, you'll miss your mom. And it, as it turned out, my mom passed of breast cancer when I was 36. So it wasn't until I was 16 years old that I realized not everybody had it. They didn't see what I saw. So it said we have five dimensions. We have a body, a mind, a spirit, a soul, and oneness. And I, at first I thought spirit and soul, I thought they were the same thing. And it said, no, they're two different parts of ourselves. But I like this diagram because each one is as important as the other. Sometimes we think the spiritual is more important than the body. But here it's saying, no, they're all five are just as important. And I like this because it looks like a stick figure, you know, as a person. So your, your body is of course, your physical, tangible being. You look like you, I look like me. and But it's also your material, like what kind of car you have, of what your house looks like and all of that. Your mind is your logical, rational self. And it is, uh, it's the one that does your taxes. It's, it does your accountants work. It's it, people who are engineers, accountants, lawyers, they rely on a, their mind dimension. It creates systems. It likes Excel spreadsheets. Your spirit is the part of you that came from absolute unconditional love into your body. And it looks out your eyes at the world and the life you've created for it. And your spirit values 
unconditional love, peacefulness, passion above everything else. The soul is your purpose. Oneness is God, creator, universe. It is a part of you, but it's your sense of connection and belonging. So these are all five dimensions. And you can see if you're strong, medium, or weak in any of your dimensions. I mean, you know if your body's weak. You know if your body's strong. So putting them all together, in my book, I put them all together, but I also show what people are like when they're stressed. So sometimes you can find out which dominance you are by how you're stressed. So sometimes body dominance when they're stressed, they max out their credit cards because they love shopping and shopping soothes their body dimension. Or you can see that they might go and get plastic surgery and they'll spend a lot of money on that. Mind dominance, they want, they created a system and when they're stressed, it's because their system is breaking down. So now they're starting to micromanage everybody at work to get them back into the system. And then they're creating stress in the workplace. And then people are quitting. And then spirit dominance, well, they want to go home. They want to stay in their house and they want to just be on their own. Shut the world out. And these ones just go harder at their purpose. And these ones can understand why everybody doesn't want to feel connection and belong. So you can have a look at this. You can be body dominant, but you can also be body competent. So I prefer to be body competent. I don't need to be dominant. I exercise every day. Oneness. It started with oneness. Then it went to soul. Then it went to spirit. Then it went to mind. Then it went to body. But my editor for this book said, Margo, put body first because mind dominant people run the world. And if you want to convince mind dominant people of this theory, start with body because you can say you have a body and they'll go, yes, I do. You have a mind, a logical, rational side. Yes, I do. You have a spirit. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, you have a spirit, part of you that will go someplace after you die. Okay, yes. And some of you might be in a career that's crushing your spirit. Yes, you have a soul purpose. Yes, and you have a sense of connection and belonging. So my editor said, start with body and move this way. But, the, but that big figure started this way and moved this way. So my question to your audience is, what would happen to the world if everybody put oneness first? Oneness first, connection and belonging. What would happen to the world if we put oneness first every day, connection and belonging, before we put money, possessions, materialism, micromanaging at work? What if we put oneness first? And so we keep asking the universe questions and we're and the group is really manifesting now. So really, really fun, interesting things are happening to them. And their life is starting to get easier because Vivian, we're done with hard, the hard lessons. We want easy now. And but it takes a lot of uh, spiritual discipline. And I think the very first place to start is, are you truly yourself? That's when you start manifesting. The other thing that you do is, when you get those inklings, you know, you get a little message in your ear, call your friend. Write a thank you note to that person. And then you don't do it. Okay. Now you hear the little voice, write a thank you note. And you get your box of cards, you write a thank you note and you put it in the mailbox right now. The universe works the same way. So when the universe 
um, when you listen to the little seeds it plants there for you and you respond straight away, it says, hmm, now there's somebody who responds because the universe needs people on earth to fulfill what it needs us to do. Like it needed me to be a teacher. So I became a teacher. But it'll feed you a little something to do. The quicker you act on it, the quicker you'll manifest. The universe sees that and then said, huh, now there's somebody who acts fast. But people who get these inklings and they just sit on them, they don't do anything about it. It's harder for them to manifest, right? I don't worry about the money. I go over here and I say, how can I serve the universe over here? And then if I pour all of my attention into that without even thinking about money, the money comes back and it goes over here. Do you see what I mean? I'm not focusing on the money. I'm focusing on serving and being uh, a really good human being. When you say to the universe, I'm ready now. I'm ready now to open the door to the next grander version of myself. You'll be amazed at all the most beautiful things that come in. I remember my son, he lost his job during COVID. And uh, so he said, mom, I've lost my job during COVID. What do I do? And I say, you do what you did last time when you didn't have a job. Because it worked both times the exact same way. And I said, you cry out to the universe, you go find a quiet spot, and you have a heart to heart to God, universe, creator, the force, oneness. And you say, I'm ready now for my next job. And he came over here for lunch, and he was sitting at my table. He said, okay, I'm going to do it right here at your table. I'm ready now, universe, for my next job. And I said, now get your pie chart out and say, what am I going to do in my body dimension to get my, get a new job? Well, he had a scraggly beard from COVID because nobody was allowed to go out, right? And his hair kind of looked like. And so he just, he put on there, cut my hair, <laughs> shave my beard. <laughs> and then he had gained a few pounds because of COVID as well. Uh, get Make sure I have a nice outfit. Then he went over here. What are you going to logically, rationally do to get a job? So he said, okay, go on uh, LinkedIn, redo my resume, do this on his phone. He said, look at this, mom. It's even working faster than last time. All I did was tell the universe I'm ready. And here's a text from one of my friends saying, we, my company needs to hire you. And he, he said last time he had to go through the whole thing. And, he, and the last time he did it, he said, I went through all of them. And then suddenly this white being came before me. He was in, he was in one of those uh, saltwater float tanks. I don't know if you know what they are, but you float in there and they're in a little capsule. And he was in pitch darkness. He said, I was crying out to the universe. I'm ready now <laughs> like this. And this white being came into the thing and showed him his whole life, what he was supposed to do. So this second time, he's sitting at my dining room table and he said, I'm ready now, body, ready now, mind, ting, in comes this. He said, okay, I'm going to that interview tomorrow. And, uh, but I'm going to make sure that that job, okay, universe, you're listening to me. I know you're listening to me because you just got me a job right now. And he said, and he said, mom, I've been out of work for three months. And I, and, and all I did was start here and already ting on my phone. I'm going to have a job interview tomorrow. So he said, but I want this job to be one that my spirit wants to live. I want it to be fulfill a soul purpose. I don't want it to be just a job. And I want to get back to connection and belonging because COVID made us so disconnected. And so his job is exactly everything he asked the universe for. So this really works. If you want the universe to really listen, say, I'm ready now, and show you're ready and get busy. Sometimes I have people who say to me, I want to own a retreat property. Well, how are you handling the house you have now? 
and I'll go into their house and Vivian, sometimes it smells and it's dirty. And I think, well, you can, you have to be able to handle the house you have now before you can get a bigger house or else you're going to get a place and it's going to still be dirty and smell. And then no one's want to going to want to come to your retreat. So make sure the house you have now is beautiful. I don't care if it looks like a cardboard box, keep it clean, keep it beautiful. Because I don't need a big house to live in. Just keep what you have clean. If you have one room, make your bed. Clean your room. Keep it organized. If you can do that, then the universe will say, oh, you can, you can take care of what you have. You're ready for more then you'll get more. And it'll be, you'll have to grow the skill set to get that more. And then you'll get more and more and more. And that's what's happened to me in my lifetime. So every time I can, like right now, I'm in a growth spurt. So the universe has packed it on for me right now. Packed it on, Vivian. It's huge what, what it's asking me to do right now. Even my neck's a little bit sore from carrying it around. So uh, it's huge because I have to grow my skill set so that I can grow into this new position the universe has given to me. But I don't think it's going to take long, six months maybe, and then I'll be ready for more again. So yeah. I always say, I, I run a workshop called Be More by Morning. Be More by Morning. Go, first of all, clean up your house. Figure out how you can be the best at your job. Figure out how you can be the best at building connection and belonging in the workplace, in your family. Once you start doing those things, you'll start manifesting like crazy. In the very center of your digital vision board, you put the healthiest, most beautiful, most fun picture of yourself. Because your spirit always wants to go back to the healthiest, most fun, most brilliant version of yourself, right? So you want to put that in the center. And then all the people that you care about, that they're also excited and vibrant. Um, and then you can put things around here where there are pictures of, I, I can do these things. Well, thank you so much, Vivian, for inviting me onto your show. It's such a pleasure to meet you. And I hope someday I meet you in person. And anybody here who wants to reach out to me, you can send an email. I, I love to answer them. Tell me your story. If you have a question or something, I can reply back. And uh, if you are interested in my book, you can find it on my website. And uh, it was such a pleasure.